Hello, everyone. So this is uh, Meet the Maintainer session. If you are a maintainer in Zephyr, uh, please join us here at the front so you can speak up and answer questions uh, you know, if, they if need be. This is something that we started doing uh, just last year. And it was really good, really successful, yeah, and yeah, but Kate is not here, yeah. No. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, so we have people here, and, and non-maintainers, please come closer so you can actually participate in the conversation and ask questions without us, like, being spread around, yeah. So does anybody know if Kate is coming? She is, okay. So again, as I uh, uh, said earlier, we, we did it for the first time last year and it was really interactive and very successful and a few actually of the points that were raised uh, by the, the community and, and the various maintainers were uh, taken into uh, consideration. We, 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 we had like a lot of actions and a lot of things that uh, we did to improve uh, our overall, uh, you know, processes, guidelines, and, and moving things forward. Yeah. Uh, so basically, I would start like with uh, the few or the, the major problems that uh, we as a community uh, had and we started to address. Uh, and, and that's like really the interface that we all have, which is GitHub, yeah, where we all meet, where we are all uh, converse and push our code and, and, and try to get reviews and try to get our changes and uh, features we are interested in into the project. And one of the major uh, problems that we had is, is like one thing is the review time, not getting reviews. Uh, or getting you know the, the wrong reviews and things sometimes not being merged uh, in time, although there are reviews or things that are merged very fast, you know, uh, and so on and so on. There's also the, the, uh, a few issues that we talked about uh, uh, also in the TSC meeting that we had this week. Uh, uh, about uh, you know how how you know how do we actually uh, go from somebody having an idea all the way to uh, introducing this uh, you know into introducing something like that into into the Zephyr tree uh, the RFC uh, process how do I propose something how do I get feedback on uh, an idea or a feature. And how, how do I drive something like that through the project? And it seems like based on the conversation that we had and, and based on a lot of the experience and a lot of the interactions with developers and, and the community, it seems like this is not really understood and uh, not, not, not perfect and something that we definitely want to improve. So nobody, nobody, uh, nobody's time is wasted. Uh, and that things actually uh, take the right path uh, very early on instead of, you know, uh, creating conflict sometimes and, and, as I said, wasting uh, people's time in terms of on, uh, introducing new features. So this is, this is like one of the things that we definitely need uh, to talk about and, uh, and get your feedback uh, 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 to, to be able to address. One thing that we addressed based on the feedback from last year was uh, the what we call right now the 4i principle, which is basically making sure that code changes uh, get uh, proper reviews from different uh, stakeholders in the project and that s features don't get pushed, reviewed, merged, uh, submitted, everything you want by one single organization yeah that's something that we established based on the feedback that we got here and i think it's working really well right now yeah in terms of like making sure that 
uh, you know, uh, people are reviewing the changes and and uh, the right way, and that things don't uh, get rushed into the tree based on one organization preferences or, or schedules and, and, and stuff like that. So there is always another set of eyes that looks at the changes and uh, at least make sure that uh, they are neutral and they are, you know, uh, sane, you know, from a project perspective. And that actually is now documented. We need to find a way how to track it, uh, but uh, it's, it's actually going really well. So these are like the two things that uh, decision making uh, that we definitely something that we want to improve. And I just talked about the the, the review process, the the four I principle which we introduced, and uh, it, it 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 has been working really well. I wonder if others have any uh, other items they want to put forward, things that need to be discussed, that can be positive, can be negative as well. Yeah, don't uh, hesitate to, you know, put also tough questions to the maintainers. We don't want to get into a review process here in this meeting in terms of like specific PRs and, and stuff like that. Usually this will not be productive, yeah, but try to help us as a community and uh, try to get uh, things moving forward for everyone, yeah, and not, not individual requests related to individual areas. So with that, I would uh, uh, pass the microphone to some of the maintainers here, just to give like uh, you know their thoughts about how things have been going, and then give the floor also to to the community here uh, to uh, you know to raise their concerns or their feedback in general. Yeah, Rex, anything you want? Yeah, so I think uh, overall, I'd, I mean, Zephyr seems to be uh, a growing, flourishing community. Um, the thing I would say that's, you know, from as, as maybe a maintainer is, is I, I, I do think, you know, Zephyr has a lot of users and uh, a relatively small uh, group of contributors uh, in most areas, right? Like a lot of the chip vendors or in this case, bricks, right, for CAN, for all chips. Um, but you know, I would say just don't be afraid to, to contribute back. Uh, even small things are, are very welcome. I think we try to be very welcome as a community. Um, and really, I, you know, that help is, is greatly appreciated. So, yeah. Yeah, I'll just, you know, adding on to what Anas is saying, we're, we're trying to be transparent with everything that we do, um, even from, uh, you know, the governing board perspective, we've got certain objectives that we want to improve on the project and to push down to the TSC and then push down into our community. And we, we look for the feedback from the community. Uh, the, the honest, there was a focus for the, since the, the, the surveys came back, multiple meetings looking at it. Uh, Benjamin processed the data through ChatGPT, I think. <laughs> Um, to try to figure out what the trends were that were coming back because as individuals, we, you know, we all have, you know, most of us all have day jobs and stuff and we're trying to uh, either, you know, push along our own company's interests as far as enablement and stuff, but we're all, pretty much all of us are very cognizant to the fact that the, in order for the Zephyr project to continue to grow and to be successful, uh, it it has to be open and it has to be, um, we, we as maintainers and stuff have to be aware of where the pain points are and then try to figure out ways to address them. And so we, we do, I mean, actively look for that feedback from you guys. Anyone else before we pass? So since we're talking about maintainership and maintainers, in general, Aside from the eternal not enough maintainers uh, problem, that uh, I don't think we can we need to go over because we know there's not that much we can do other than attracting uh, talent. Um, I think one one of the things I'd like to discuss that we have a problem with in this project is big changes. So um, it, it it really hard. Um, I understand that this is, might be the case in other project. I don't know, but 
there are proposals of changes that are bigger in size in context that are really hard to push through. And I think maybe we can do something about that in the sense of uh, establishing timelines. There is something, uh, some uh, uh, already some, some precedents in our documentation, but perhaps if, uh, if, if something is presented, it's well described, it's justified, and there is no reason for it not to progress, uh, even if those that have uh, objected to it disappear, uh, there has to be a way to move it forward. And I think that's one of the things that I've been seeing as part of the architecture working group where many maintainers attend, is this difficulty on pushing bigger changes because of concerns and mm, backwards compatibility. And I think there is something we can do there, not you know, something in terms of agreeing together um, um, how best to do this uh, without, obviously, without putting at risk the integrity of the project. But uh, there is, there's been too much frustration in the past with this kind of, uh, from, um, you know, from many people, not, not only, uh, obviously, uh, particularly in general, about the inability to do this. So that's, uh, that's one topic that I think worth, is worth discussing. I'm probably the worst person to ask, to make points about process, um, but since it is a sort of a maintainer-focused issue, um, and we seem to be on the opposite side of it here, I, I, has anybody given any thought to the XZ debacle and you know the, the fallout thereof? I mean, there have been so the circumstance there obviously was that you have a project with not enough maintainers. In that case, the number was one. And someone shows up and is helpful and great and and achieves you know commit rights and you know proceeds to then backdoor the project. Zephyr isn't susceptible. <laughs> like I say, I'm not really the right person to talk about this, but I do think it, it needs to be mentioned. I, I maybe this is more of a TSC question. Um, but we're not as susceptible simply because we're not a single project. A backdoor in Zephyr is kind of a nebulous idea. Um, but there have been. There's, I mean, I don't, I don't want to, I'm not going to point any fingers. There have been sort of two, two moments in the last couple of months where I kind of thought maybe there was something in, 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 in progress kind of like that. You know, like there was a, a commit that showed up from a, you know, otherwise minor contributor and they had a bunch of warning fix ups. And I kind of pointed out that like one of them involved a whole class of casts where you were taking a, what, what had been a you know a, 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 a arbitrarily typed thing and you're casting it down to a 16-bit value and I forget all the details but you know like that can have security impact if you're actually truncating the the, the top half of the word and the other one was a request to add someone as a collaborator and a collaborator is not like a big deal right but it was a you know I, I think was it I think it was Chris that mentioned that that you know it was a person with only five commits and you know like I and, and I don't want to like there is zero uh, a real suspicion yeah, here on in, in any way, and I don't I don't actually think anyone's trying to backdoor Zephyr. But is this something we need to talk about as a process kind of thing, to or at least to give some? Yeah. Some so, view? yeah, I've 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 been given this actually particular thought um, mainly because of part of my background from a previous life. Um, that particular instance, y y you have to look at it as a long con, right? So. The person coming in with just a couple of commits, you know, you can look at it, you know, and, and you see the, the changes. But um, you know, these entities that are going to do those kind of things, you know, th this last one was found because they had a bug, right? And and every software has bugs, and those entities that are doing those kind of things are usually going to be focusing on that really hard. Um, and also, you are particularly exposed because there were binaries, right? You can't, you're not going to see that. But I do think it is something, I th the project, and I was planning on bringing it up internally with uh, either the security, probably the security one, just to start it there. Um, let's think about this. What, what is it that we would do, potentially, to be aware or to, to look out for something like that? Um, I, I think in this particular case, you've got a, a contributor that nobody really knows, right? It's just a name, right? Do, does anyone even have a face for this person? No, no, I know that, but it's, it's, I think it's something yeah. that, you, you, as a large project right. that is being used and growing, yeah. you do yeah. want to be, I think you do want to have some sort of a, um, not necessarily a, a, a position, but to start you know, building into your processes things that would 
Right, uh, like y name brand employer, you know, lo you know, years long yeah. history, that sort of thing. But again, I, I have no suspicion of this individual at all. And the request was just for collaborator status, which is literally just so you can at them in a GitHub yeah. issue, so that to, to ask for a review. I don't think that's a problem. I just it it, it tickled my brain enough to think that I think we might want to give this some thought. Go ahead, Kuma. Just as, as you're thinking about it, David, I think looking at, and I forget the history here with what the Linux kernel did with regards to like key signing and so forth, so that way commits, and not to say that we need to go to that degree, but something like around maintainers where like some of that model where you had to have somebody else sign your key and so forth, so that at least there was a, you know someone was real, right, to some degree. At some point in, you know, again, not to say that's at a contributor level, but maybe as you get to a maintainer level or something to that long con potential concern, so. Yeah, I think I know what Andy is referring to exactly, yeah. <laughs> and I, by the way, that's, that's really uh, funny because when I went through the history of the exploit in XE, uh, and looked at the at the names of these guys. Somehow that correlated. Probably Andy knows what I'm talking about. And I thought about it multiple times. Yeah, the social pressure and the social engineering and how do you get commit rights and and so on and so on. But I mean, obviously we we you know the way we are running our project it's different from how uh, these uh, projects are run, but. I think the, the, the problem, and that's something that needs to be discussed, is that we have, and, and uh, Carlos pointed that out, we have a problem of you know, maintainers. Yeah? But more than that, we have a problem of, you know, to get to a maintainer, at least per our process, you have to be a collaborator. Right? So, and, and people who actually review stuff. Yeah? And the way we are doing things right now is that we, I mean, we used to have the code owners file where would people actually get notified when something has changed. Right now we have the maintainer file which does that exactly. And uh, certain people want to get notified when something changes, maybe because they care about this and, and, and that's, that's really great, yeah. And there is the other side of things from people, from from vendors in this in this um, instance, uh, who are very active in the project, but they are hesitating to actually go and add themselves into the maintainer file, maybe because of how we are documenting things and how we are like it's it seems like it's almost, you know, we are telling people, okay, you you know, we have this concept of maintainer, collaborator, contributor, etc. But hey, you have, I mean, there are these checks or whatever that you have to go through and maybe nobody actually reads the documentation and don't understand because I don't think it's that bad, yeah? But there seems to be a, a major disconnect. It's, it's a mental block. Yeah, I think it's a mo mental and, and block. And yeah, multiple times I've had to t tell people, don't worry, it's not that bad. It's exactly. Not <laughs> exactly. Because some people t t tend to think that maybe that's going to eat up half of my free time. No, I mean, that's it's not the case. Exactly. And in the, probably in this particular instance, and actually I was, I was even commenting, like, this guy is contributing to this area and... Yeah, wh where did he come from? And we have actually a lot of instances like that, that people come in, you know, and they are, you show a lot of interest, start submitting stuff and, and changing and in, et cetera, and out of no, and you don't even know who they are, right? And, and I, I get contacted a lot. Can I add myself, et cetera? And I, 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 I will not get to a point where I say, no, you can't add yourself because whatever. Sure, welcome, add yourself, yeah? And I'll, I'll monitor that, yeah? Uh, so we, we need to be careful in terms of like, what does it mean, actually? Does it just because somebody is in, a contrib in the maintainer file as a contributor, is that does not pose a risk uh, from a project perspective? I don't think so, yeah, because we still have the rule. I mean, whatever is, is being submitted, whether you are in the maintainer file or not, needs to be reviewed by other people, needs to be reviewed by the maintainer themselves. And you will not get far if you try to do something, you know, uh, you know. Even if you have merge malicious. rights, because it yeah. will be, it will yeah, be, exactly. it will be detected. Yeah, so exactly. the way we run, like you were saying, the way we run 
Zephyr is completely different to that one-man project where this guy will probably didn't have yeah. time to get. It's, I think we have enough safeguards. Honestly, I, I think we're quite safe in that regard. We have safeguards uh, in terms of uh, the way we review, the way we merge, and the way we go uh, and, 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 and incorporate code that we yeah. hopefully are not susceptible, not to this point at least. Okay, at this point, I want actually to best to, to uh, the other side, the contributors, the suspicious contributors, <laughs> collaborators. <laughs> <laughs> so anybody has any questions, any feedback, any comments on how things are being running? If that's, again, it can be positive as well. You can say, hey, guys, this is great. Yeah, and, you know, maybe we can close early, yeah? <laughs> Yeah, uh, I have a question for maintainers. Uh, with 3.7, which is LTS, just coming up, what things do you think you would do differently compared to the last LTS? What are the points of improvement, and what needs to be wrapped up? What do you think is, hey, this is overarching, maybe hardware model B2 needs some, some changes and whatnot? It's an open question. I think we, we talked a little bit about it in the TSC, didn't we? Uh, you know, aligning or uh, being careful with aligning with uh, external modules that we uh, or taking into account the versioning and the release uh, process and the uh, forecast or the 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 the, 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 the release uh, preparations that they have in in, in planned. Uh, of projects that are included with Zephyr is important for sure because we had a bit of a snafu with um, TLS last time, right? Oh, well, TFM, sorry. TFM, yeah. So, so that's that's one problem. The other thing is, I remember Chris uh, with the changes. Uh, Chris Fried, I'm not sure if he's here, um, but he had the proposal to add a lot of changes to RISC Five. But there was a, in the in the LTS, but there was a good reason behind that in the sense that. Uh, SMP was completely broken. I mean, that, that, that was a mistake, shipping an LTS with SMP support for uh, RISC 5 that was broken. I think that's something we should learn from, for it sure. It was not you. complete. No, I mean, it, I would say it was not complete. I mean, it, yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah, but, but my point being that it was not, you, it, you had config SMP that would not fail you the RISC 5 build, and at the same time, mm, at least according to him, it was not usable. Can, uh, Arguably, and let me add, let me add on that too because um, from an LTS perspective, it would be useful to get the feedback from the community that's consuming that as to what expectations they would like to see on that. I mean, we we clearly understand that bugs and security fixes need to be addressed. Um, there is some disagreement about whether or not you should allow new SOCs or boards, um, but you know where does that line go, right? I don't really care personally. I, I mean, I, I put something up in the TSC about that, but it was more in alignment about, you know, how we do the timings of LTSs and how long we support them. But it would be useful from the community that may be doing products th where they require an LTS because of the longer term commitments and what they would expect from the project, you know, from us, because a, a, a lot of the members of the uh, you know, like myself, I'm a semiconductor vendor. I don't do products. Um, so, I mean, products in the sense of, <laughs> and I, I do, I do, I sell chips to bricks. <laughs> uh, I want to, to um, say about a problem, yeah, is that sometimes some pull requests are taking too much time to be reviewed. So we have a minimum am amount of time that needs to pass so the pull request gets merged. But we also need to have a maximum uh, time that after that, if no one review reviews, it gets merged automatically or something like that. Or, <laughs> you, you know? No. It's, or maybe we can have a staging area where the, that code is merged. Like for drivers that are not touching anything, we can relax the rules. Sometimes. But the thing is, a pull request is a staging area. It's a branch, right? Yeah. What you mean is like, like, like a staging area where multiple pull requests mm -hmm. get get merged. Mm -hmm. But what? But then, like you wouldn't be able to rely on that anyway, because that that. Uh, you know, because then, first of all, maintaining a head, a Git head, is mm -hmm. always a costly thing. So mm -hmm. that's that's not doesn't come for free. So because then you would have to cherry pick that 
under which criteria, then back mm -hmm. to main. It would be yet another review, right? Yeah. So, and then you, you would basically have created a parallel Zephyr, right? Mm -hmm. Not sure that that adds value, honestly, uh, from my perspective, because you can do that yourself. I mean, everybody, um, in the talk with Jordan earlier today, he mentioned mm -hmm. I had the fork of Zephyr with us all sorts of cherry pick patches and mm -hmm. fixes. And it, Invariably, I guess almost everybody ends up doing this uh, when they when they're doing a product, especially a product that leaves, needs to live for a long time. And I don't think having that branch would save you from having to do this, honestly. Yeah. But Carlos, Carlos, I mean, uh, uh, the problem was raised is that there there is a minimum time. Yeah, yeah, no, sorry, there, I was we're referring is, to the second part. Yeah, 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 exactly. And there is there are a lot of pull requests. Actually, today I was looking over 800 open pull requests. Mm -hmm. And that, that, okay, I mean, I don't usually get scared because, oh, there are lots of drafts, there's a lot of whatever, but there, there is a class of pull requests that go in, either the maintainer is non-responsive, either they are not maintained, or, or not maintained, they, they don't get assigned to anybody, yeah, and, or basically they just take forever because there is disputes or there's discussion, so, so, by the way, some pull requests, rightfully take time and need to take time, yeah? So, some are abandoned by the author as well, to be fair. Sorry? Some are abandoned by the author as well. Or some so get abandoned by the author as well, but I mean, there, there are different classes, but there is also this class of things that just die, that die on their own. Yeah. Because, mm -hmm. And I was showing that in my presentation yesterday, is that the reason, I mean, we have probably 90% of our contributors over time, who actually submit one commit or 10 commits, mm -hmm. yeah? Or they show up just like f for less than, then they disappear, yeah? And my, my question is, uh, why, yeah? I mean, that, that could be somebody just fixing like a typo for fun, yeah? Or somebody who actually tried to submit something, maybe it got something in first, just to get familiar with the project, and then try to sub submit something more serious, was never, you know, uh, you know, it was never reviewed, and we have many of those, and just gave up and moved. This thing is not working for you. That, that's, that's something we need to figure out, how to go back to this, like, this class of PRs that are not drafts and not DNMs and not failing CI or whatever, even those who, which, but failing CI. Actually, we have so many pull requests that uh, you know, get stale, get abandoned, whatever that we have in the queue right now. It's because the authors submitted something, they didn't get their emails right, and it's the compliance check is failing, and people are asking them to go fix them. Probably have, they have no idea how to fix their Git identity, and they get stuck and 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 stay stuck for such a long time. And people ask them, can you rebase or can you can you change your email? Blah blah blah. And ne things never happen, you know, and then they just move uh, move away. And so there are like different classes. Where we need to have a way to keep track of those and and, and ask ourselves why. Yeah, and but but having said that, having said that, and thanks to Keith. Uh, yeah, I was going to call out. Yeah, go ahead, Keith. You can yeah, talk so, about that. Yeah. Uh, there is an escalation process for PRs if they're if they're get, if they get stalled. So we, we do have that written down and documented. Um, one part of that is uh, the, uh, the dev review meeting that happens on Thursdays that's led by Marine uh, does some triage and tries to look for things that uh, have been neglected uh, or got ignored. Um, but the, there's a documented process, you know, ping on the PR, ping on Discord, that sort of thing. So do check that out. It's not a perfect process. Um, if you have suggestions for improvements, uh, you know, please reach out to us. One, one more thing related to this, one thing that I do see as possible and that may be helpful is uh, calling out, for example, every TSC we could do something like gather statistics on um, reviews that have not been looked at uh, by the maintainer and basically going out, this maintainer has this many outstanding reviews, you know, that may help, so things like that. Or even taking it to the extreme, uh, if you have more than 100 pending reviews, you're suspend your maintainership suspend, I, I'm, I'm going too far probably there. But, my, but you see my point, that, I think that could work instead of merging, auto-merging or merging to another branch, right? That's the direction I would go in. 
So I think there's another class of PRs, at least that I personally struggle with as a maintainer, is that you know when you have somebody who's new to open source and contributes a very large driver, that's it's a, it's a large burden to review it, and it's kind of hard to to give somebody feedback on that when there's a thousand things that need to change, and like how how do we how do we get them to kind of scope things down to the point that it is not such a huge burden on maintainers to review and come back and review because there's often multiple iterations and the larger the pull request is, the more iterations it tends to take, especially with new contributors. And it's something that I see a lot with and, and, and I, I struggle to keep up with them um, because there's just so many. And you have a so I have a comment, I, I had a question, maybe we can add to like the contribution guideline, what can be like the expectation like when you're doing a PR I know there is what should be like the minimum amount of time but what is expected amount of time that you or PR can sit in a review I'm, I'm just telling this because today my I, I got like a, a message from from my colleagues and they were like asking how oh, can we do something to speed up the PR and they were showing like uh, several of their uh, comments and they were asking oh maybe if we join it as a contributor or something but I look at the at the PRs and they were like it took only a week from the point when it was posted. There was like several discussion going on and forth, like with the comments, um, review, uh, answering to the to the comments, like fixing the comments, and then only one day from after the last comment was fixed to the point where it was merged. So it was like everything took uh, like a week, and they were asking like, "Oh, can we do faster? How can we speed it up?" And I was like. I don't know how to respond. I think it looks perfectly fine with it. So maybe I think I think because I know the conversation. In this case, yeah, you, it you would there. fall onto us to set the expectations correctly to our colleagues who are used to uh, another pace of development because they develop, you know, private. Uh, Zephyr is not a product. If exactly, you want, exactly. if you want. If you want to get things accelerated, create a fork and do everything We have you want. it. We have it. I know this. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. I, so I, I guess we kind of responded to that by but, but and, and explained it. I, I was just wondering maybe in a, in a documentation like contribution guideline, give you like what is expected. Like if it takes a week, don't don't. It, it's kind of normal that it can a, take exactly. A week. I, think, I think that still fine. makes sense too. Like to set timelines, uh, very approximate, but say okay, uh, maybe after a week start complaining, but not after 20 minutes. Uh, so that that I think would yeah. make sense. Well. And, and I'll say that, I mean, Dan, Daniel knows we're internal in our company. We've got a lot of new people coming on board. And they're used to a process internally where they post a PR. And I'm not even sure some of them get reviewed. They just get merged and they let testing test. Um, and so, uh, but I think externally, we, you also get folks coming in that may be coming from a same kind of environment, a corporate environment or something like that. And, and in an open source project, again, a lot of the maintainers, a lot of the collaborators, those people that are going to be reviewing it also have day jobs. And so you, you have to let that sort process of. work through. Well, but you'd also push. I mean, I was, I was going to. No, there's nothing wrong with pushing. Right. Nudging, so. as I would call it, nudge. Exactly. Uh, but but, just, but you oh, still on. have to, as long as there's conversation going on, unless the conversation's just going nowhere. And if you can figure that out, then address it. But yeah. Yeah, and j just to sort of interject, because uh, this is not a process thing, so I'm totally expert to talk about it. Um, y you know, the, the, those of us who have been around here a long time just get a ton of review requests. I mean, there's, it's just, it's a, it's a non-ending flood. And most of them, I mean, the bulk of them are like in drivers and, and our subsystems I don't care about, and I know there are other experts, I can ignore them. But the problem is, if I get busy and I ignore my, you know, I've, I've, it's all filtered into a separate folder, right? But if I ignore my, my GitHub email for, three or four days, there's now you know a thousand or two thousand messages in there. I'm never gonna get to whatever was missed. It's just not gonna happen. So scream, yell on Discord, find you know, find if you at me on disc on GitHub again, it's gonna go into the giant queue and make it get lost. Yeah. But it just make sure that I see it and I'll come and review it, right? I mean but yeah. and I think that's true for everybody. I mean you Absolutely. Can do this that's, that's, that's actually that's key, I think. Yeah. Discord versus yeah. uh, the, GitHub I mean, notification. It, Discord, GitHub, I think that goes back to like somebody like Andy, somebody like me. Kumar probably and a few others. You getting a lot of notifications. You are probably uh, you know assigned to many areas and so on. Yeah, uh, that's where actually the, the one problem that we have is the granularity of the areas. I mean that's why, for example, something that we discussed for things like you know uh, like uh, 
device tree or device model or, or, or like key areas. We need to have multiple monitors and have a round robin type of thing. We did that for the kernel, so it's now Andy and, and Peter, right? And uh, we did that for other areas as well, yeah? So, and probably we need to do that more. So there is some load balancing somehow. So it's not, and also keeping people honest, yeah, in terms of like, you know, me as a maintainer submitting something, probably somebody else needs to, you know, be assigned to it and approved, uh, approve it. Just going back to uh, what was said earlier by Machi and, and the whole Zephyr is not a product, that's exactly why we introduced the 4i principle. Because this actually avoids that, yeah? I know, I know exactly how it feels, yeah, and probably everybody here getting like the nudge, nudge, can you merge it? Yeah, can you merge it? No, I can't merge it. It has to be approved by somebody else. And I tell that people straight away, yeah. If you want it now, if you want it today, just, you know, cherry pick the, the change and put it in your tree, yeah. It doesn't work otherwise. And that actually works really great, yeah, because this this keeps everyone honest in terms of like, the, the personal preferences and and, and 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 collegial, you know, you're sitting in a in a in a room. Somebody submits. Two minutes later, you have two approvals, and three minutes later, it's merged. That's 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 gone. That's not going to happen anymore. Hopefully, yeah. There are always there are always exceptions, and we can deal with that. That's why David, when he has something and and so on, it's already reviewed, etc. He asks me, and I ask him exactly the same way. Go take a look at that, and, and merge it if you see it. It's correct. I don't merge it myself. Yeah, and that's, in, in my opinion, that is working really great. And I see that from actually very interesting because I saw a PR by Nordic. <laughs> uh, oh, well. no, 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 that, no. Wait a second. Yeah, wait a second. Which was. Uh, no, I mean it was reviewed all, only by Nordic, and it was by, merged by by uh, by Carlos. And I know Carlos sometimes, you know, over coffee. I don't know what he's doing. So, uh, things get missed. I, I miss things as well. But the nice thing that I saw is the submitter or somebody. What's his name? Tally. Yeah, he actually Emil. commented, said Carlos. You were too fast. This was approved only by. I, so, I know and, and which I one appreciate you mean. that. Yeah, and this is this is really great because we understand. You know, it, it's a process. It, it, I understood immediately that was not like intentional or anything. Things happen, right? So that's that's really how it's it's, it's working really well. Sorry, I, that was a long monologue. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, go ahead. So, so, uh, one thought in this space is is you know having be and we're doing it now, but I think it's also some you know maybe a tech talk or something about what it's like to be a maintainer, right? In the sense of the burden that is there, this, my queue backs up if I don't look at stuff for four days, right? Or whatever, and just that sense of like, hey, you know, there were, like early on when I started contributing to open source, uh, I remember we were working on U-Boot and uh, the company I was at, and we had a really hard time getting code accepted, and we didn't understand why or what was going on. And after a while, we realized that you know, and this goes to kind of Honest's, you know, what he had in his presentation about where we have, you know, a significant number of contributions that are by people who are only contributing, you know, five or ten PRs or something or lower. And the thing in that project became clear was the maintainer's like, look, I've got to maintain this code well after you go away, right? The reason that my, his bar was so high for those small cases was, look, you're going to go back to your day job, you go back to building your product, whatever. I've got to still keep this code going and living and maintaining and dealing with it. And so, and then, and the bar dropped as well because once he realized, hey, you're actually going to be here as part of this community, of you're not just th that person that's going to, get, you know, and I've been, you know, I have projects where I've or contributed one or two patches to something to fix something and go back to whatever I was doing. So there's cases on being on both sides of that. Um, but that kind of sense of saying, hey, you know, if, if I know Carlos submits something and I look at it and it's like it's not perfect, I know if I go back to him in a week or something, you know, he's there because he's engaged, he's there, he's part of the community, you know that, right? Versus somebody that you kind of just don't know who they are and maybe it's one or two and it's like, so I think there's some things there on just kind of being able to express for people to understand why these 
you know, why is it, it that we're not merging things and you're used to your company environment where things go in and, and so forth, right? Why, why we're able to say the quality of this open source project is what it is is because we do these things, right? So. One of the talks that Greg Crow Hartman gave a while back, at, I think it was at Lenaro, was, you know, help me not to reject your patch. Yeah, exactly. And I think maybe um, us doing a variant of that for Zephyr um, and helping educate everyone as to, okay. I, uh, yeah, again, like I'm going to repeat that internally we have a lot of new p developers. I mean, they're not new to developing, they're obviously very experienced, but they're new to Zephyr. And I'll tell you, there's I, I'm like a repeating broken record when I talk about, you know, they'll say, hey, help me with my PR, you know, this is not, and I go and look, CI's failing. I said, guys, you're not going to get anyone's paying attention to it because they're busy. Make sure it's clean first. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, I, it's it's a constant educational thing. We have it internally, obviously, and there's a, a look. We have a number of developers. I'm sure you know when Nordic brings on new folks or new teams, you've had the same kind of challenges. So, and it's true from the community perspective too. Perhaps uh, an idea could be to start with a, with a tips and tricks page and a documentation for how do I get my PR merged. So we have all these escalation uh, paths documented as it is today, and the developer, sorry, committer expectations and whatnot, but. Some of these stuff, as you say, it's, it's, it's when we're pinged on Discord, it's literally many of the, it, it, uh, but CI is failing, or this one wasn't approved by, by the, by the ISNE or whatever. Looking at Benjamin right now? Yeah, I am too. <laughs> <laughs> Instead this, of tips and tricks, This could be like a TikTok talk, <laughs> yeah, well, yeah. But how yeah, about, how about the internal, to host, um, yeah, and tell people how, you know, to get their be our moving. Yeah, I did. But I did. But uh, uh, yeah. you know, instead of tips and tricks, we've been talking about an FAQ forever, and that FAQ could be technical and also regarding contribution. So you know, FAQ, page with FAQ, and you redirect them with FAQ, and you can link this section links, right? And that would work, in my opinion, very well. So gonna end up. And by the way, it. yeah, when it comes to CI, it's it's going to be even more difficult as as we move forward. I mean, there are so many ideas to to do things, you know. Some people are actually even considering in involving AI. Yeah, I mean, you, you <laughs> yeah, no. So it's it's, uh, but uh, you know, uh, on a serious note, CI is our best friend. Yeah, because without CI, uh, at least when it's working correctly, you you have to go through every single line of code, etc. And, and make, first, I have to verify, obviously, that it builds, right? That it follows like a certain style. In the future, we will have, you know, coding guidelines enabled. Yeah, so we are consistent in how we write code and how, and documentation has to build, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So if I have to do it manually as a maintainer. That's that's like another hour per PR that I have to depending on the PR side, right? So CI is our best friend, and however, as I was saying earlier, a lot of the PRs that we have are stuck on the Git identity and not using the same Git or, or whatever, or using GitHub to submit a PR, which has like just stupid GitHub no reply, uh, you know, stuff, and. We need, you know, uh, I, I don't know how to fix this, but, uh, uh, it, and I mentioned that in, on some other forum, maybe our documentation is probably not addressing that, yeah? Maybe we should, when something like this happens, post like a comment in the in the PR, that's how you fix it. Right but now it's like so hidden that but, but people just ignore it. I have to say, uh, this with Benjamin's changes where uh, you have this comment for the first PR, that mentions specifically, that links specifically the, the commit format. Yeah. Um, I think those that are too lazy, well, well let's not say lazy, but that they, they don't persevere. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Those that don't persevere across uh, beyond the first error message, I think they have not looked at what the GitHub page shows them because it's not buried. Huh? It's right there. That, that's if there's, if it's their first PR. But I assume in the second one they've gotten the the the, the, the commit format right. So um, 
I think another, another, or the bot, and I think yet another message, hey, this is a common occurrence, blah, 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 this is how you do git uh, author, uh, you know, git commit amend author, and so on. Sure, but I have to say that this works wonders the, uh, already. Yeah, 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 I completely agree. And But, but there are like some git hackery or some, some git like details that not everybody is able to do that if they are using git for the first time. Like sure. changing your author or whatever, you, you really have to, anyways, but Although it, it is explained it, uh, in the... Yeah, but just f frankly, given the size of the community and the number of new potential contributors, those folks who don't follow up when we ask them to change their email, there's maybe nothing to do about it. Like, they just, they moved on. They, they're not interested. And the, the PR, we just let it be closed by no, the we bot. We just closed the BR in this case. Yeah, yeah and then that's what we do. Because like the, the bot eventually closes it. Because the problem is, and that's really what drives, what drives some people crazy, is that... Some of these PR, somebody submits an issue. Sometimes it's a typo, you know. There's an issue about that. They open a PR, so we have to triage it and spend time on it in our meetings. Then there's a PR about that, yeah, that is somebody has to go and look through it and it, it's stuck. The issue is stuck. We can't fix it because the PR is stuck because we are expecting this person to do it, but this person has moved on. So we need to figure out how, I mean, if somebody doesn't respond, just override the PR or submit bound another it. PR, close bound, it. You know, time bound it in. Yeah, yeah. There's, yeah. A, Anyways, there's a limit yeah. in time, and then after that, yeah. that's it. And we are timing out here, yeah, so as well, because we are over time, actually, yeah. And I, uh, but if there are a few last questions, let's close on that. And <laughs> yeah, I, you said something about contributors. You can add yourself. So, for example, if I'm interested in going reviewing and I don't know, maybe fixing some of uh, the drivers from another company like Intel. We are w working together at uh, Sound Open Former. And I'm interested in their PRs regarding uh, DMA, for example, or uh, 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 DIE interface. I'm not uh, um, notified uh, by, by those PRs. How can I uh, be notified? Because, okay, I receive a lot of emails. I cannot follow them. And, but some of them, I'm interested in, in them. So I can add myself as a contributor for that? Or yes, of course. I mean, th uh, that's you that's exactly the scare company. factor. Yeah, exactly. The, the, wait, one second. Yeah, that's the yeah the scare factor that we have is that oh, this is Intel. I, I have to be Intel to be contributor. That's that's not true. Yeah, if you if you go in, and 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 add yourself there, I will be happy to approve that. Probably I will not do something like that for myself by adding myself to the NXP uh, uh, stuff because that's that's like a, a whole thing of I mean so many things are happening yeah, which is good uh, yeah as I said for some of these we're working together on Sandoval I know I know yeah. yeah and th there's another thing which we are not using there's actually in in the maintainer file there's a way to get notified and and you are not a contributor you are a watcher basically yeah, oh, yeah that that's something probably we need to start doing more often yeah yeah th i think in this case because I mean, I mean you are a collaborator right there's there's a collaborator section in the maintainer file for for those the the dma and die sections if you send a pull request um for either of those, I would plus one it. So do you there think you that the community grows so much so it would make sense to follow the Linux kernel process where we split on multiple mm, repos? Like for Linux kernel, each maintainer has its own repo, and the community yeah, is smaller, yet. so you <laughs> can follow it better. Yeah, um, I'm not sure we're there yet to be doing that, but yeah. Uh, I mean, I, I, the, the first well, problem with that is non-linear Git history anymore. So yeah, I, I, yeah, I, I know that many people will not like that because it, then you have to use Git merge yeah. for 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 the yeah, model that yeah. Linux yeah. uses. So so no more Git rebase on top. To everything. On, so that that's something that we'd lose because the simplicity of a linear Git history is definitely a plus. I mean, obviously it's not always possible, but when it is, it's a definite plus. But the current growth rate, I think. I, I agree. No, no, I'm not saying but, you. But I'm what, not saying what it's problem not a good idea. are you trying to solve? I'm, I'm not sure exactly what is the problem. We, there is too, there are too much notifications, and we there are too much notification, and we cannot follow exactly what we want. So, like, we want to follow only the I don't know DMA community or audio community, and when you look at the so GitHub, there are. But but I mean, then figure out. I mean. The, the, the notification, if it's uh, this is the uh, I mean a global GitHub problem. I mean, if you are using notification to follow what's going on, yeah. I agree with you, right? Yeah. We, 
I would say we need to figure out how to improve this without splitting the tree. I'm not sure exactly how you are going to solve this by splitting the tree and having multiple branches and multiple repos, yeah? Yeah, but stop, stop, don't start with how to solve it. Yeah, yeah. Find the problem and then let's have a discussion outside of it. Yeah, yeah. Because I do think there's different workflows you can engage in to just be able to follow things. And you I'm could exploring those myself. Yeah. You could use labels, for example. I'm, I'm sure the pull requests and issues you're interested yeah. in share a label. So, you know, I'm not sure whether GitHub allows you to filter by label, but otherwise, you could write your own script. That, that uh, you know, I'm not saying it's ideal, huh? but. Yeah, but yeah. there, there is another one. Uh, there so, so, I'm kind of, uh, I'm one of these unknowns that none of you have ever heard from or heard of before. But, uh, but uh, I've been working with Zephyr for like five years now. I was at Meta working on their undercover projects on custom silicon. So I've been doing SOC level, board level, even some arch level work in the tree, but you would never see any of the work that we're doing. And you know, now I've left and gone to another 30 person company and I'm working with a silicon vendor who's had a third party trying to do their Zephyr integration. They're doing it all closed and they're doing it all wrong, <laughs> and they will not listen to me. And so now I'm, I, I basically, you know, for our company, I'm doing our own port of, of, this, of this new SOC from this other silicon vendor that's not represented here. And, you know, I've been thinking this week that I need to contribute this, you know, in small stages, right? Here's a basic SOC with a serial port. Here's, you know, adding things on because of all the things I've heard in these conversations. But, you know, I'm that dark horse who's going to come in and say, hey, I've got all kinds of great stuff to commit. But um, what, how do you recommend people like me come in? Because I'm sure there are a lot of people like me who are working in very closed systems who at some point will be in a, in a position where, hey, now I can contribute and want to contribute, so. I can, I can uh, answer that. The, the answer is consistency. I mean, you send a pull request there, you wait, you ping people. But the, the thing is that you need to help the maintainer. You, you need to create the pull request very easy to be reviewed. And you get some of them going. And once people start to know you, you build trust. And at that point, it would, be, it would get easier. Contributing something. Yeah, I'd say start isolated. small with something something that's missing, right? And start small with something that's missing, and then keep building on it. Don't go thump everything at once. Oh no no no! Yeah, and that's just, what I say. Just I would, start it, small and incremental, I'm, and I think build trust over time. That but you already you already said your answer yourself. I mean, SOC with a UR, that's exactly how you do it. I mean, one Perfect. SOC with one driver. Uh, a board, obviously, that you can compile that. You, you're, you're on the right track. Just okay. send a pull request. Documentation. Documentation, yeah, sure. Documentation. <laughs> <laughs> okay, guys, this, this, this is like really. Uh, Erwan, you wanted to say something or? Yeah. Uh, yes, just one point. Uh, we were uh, mentioning about notification, how to be uh, notified, and so on. Uh, there is a feature in GitHub where you can disable mails, and you have a kind of you can uh, use a kind of dash dashboard that is available, and you can configure and filter on whatever on labels that you're interested in. And this is what I'm using on the day to day basis, and it's quite helpful actually. So it's avoid to get a ton of mails that you won't read anyway. So this, this is an interesting feature in GitHub that uh, can be useful. There's actually also a lot of um, extra headers in the mails from GitHub. So if you can do custom filtering on, on your mail client or mail server, you can, you can filter it into categories and, and, and monitor it much better that, that way. I think, I think uh, we definitely, I mean, probably not the FAQ, but we need like best known methods, like tips and tricks type of section, yeah? where all of this input, everybody has their dot files that do something with, or tools or whatever. That's something we definitely need. Like this is like, I think it's become essential, yeah. We already have that in, in several places, like in Beyond the Getting Started Guide, there's yeah, a couple yeah. of tricks. In, uh, I, I know that in West, for example, we explain to people how to redirect the URL so they can use HTTPS, so that they use HTTPS instead of, uh, or SSH instead of HTTPS and so on. So. We could should put that all together, perhaps. Yeah, in one I, I place. think that's probably it. 
that's where we need to be careful. Probably it doesn't have to be in the documentation as we have it. Mm -hmm. We need to figure out probably a better way, like a wiki or something like that. I don't know, yeah, but something that is... Not sure. Why? It, why? It, I mean, it does it, why, why split it up? Because uh. it's not documentation, really. Well, of, of, yeah. Anyways, we can figure it out. Yeah. Okay. I, w I want like something to be like... Live, uh, like, okay, you have an idea, you just put it. You don't have to go submit a pull request and then it gets stuck for 10 days just because you have a tip. Or I remember submitting a tip and somebody, did, oh, that works only for you. You have to set up this, you have to set up that. Uh, that's actually like West update when you do bisection, for example. I wanted to automate that. I don't want, because every time you do a bisection, the next commit doesn't work because of some stupid module that you know, has changed, right? And this is like very useful. And I tried to get it in, but somebody said, you know, didn't like it, and I had to abandon the whole idea, yeah, because I didn't have time for it. But anyways, beside the point, we need probably to figure out how to put this information, make it available, and encourage that to push it in without having to go through the review process, right? Anyways, so we are out of time. You want to say something? I just wanted to say thank you very much to all the maintainers who have actually managed to keep this, keep the velocity going over this last year. We've seen a tremendous amount of growth, and it's very much thank you to all of your hard work. Much appreciated. And each maintainer who attended today will get another coin, yeah, from. <laughs> <laughs>